ready to go live? Yeah, I'm ready. Perfect. All right, I think we're live. Yep, that's what I think that's. <laughs> According to the little tab. The thing up there. <laughs> it says meeting is now streaming live on Facebook. So I guess this is also a meeting. Yeah, welcome to the meeting. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. I like this fan play. Let's go live. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs> I'm, hey. I'm already doing it later today, sir. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> As long as you're not doing anything. <laughs> Does so, it matter? Church is like, no, well, let's do it. Let's do it. It's like, I will. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. So, uh, backstory here, since we're already live, um, this is the Service Business Mastery Podcast. I'm your host, Church Blissett. Today we have Zach Ciotta, a buddy of mine. Uh, if you don't know who Zach Ciotta is, follow him. He has like, you you only have like one YouTube channel, right? It's like, yeah, right. Like, <laughs> I like a bunch of YouTube channels. I got YouTube channels for each activity that I do. You tell me how much in depth you want me to go and I'll go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Tell us all of your YouTube channels that you can think of off the top of your head. Yeah, I suppose we can do two shows. Okay. So <laughs> I, have, I have the HVAC Shop Talk channel, which yep. is just some, you know, random videos. Like if I test something, it'll show mm -hmm. up on that channel. I have the skilled trade up channel. I'm looking at this like I'm, I wrote this down. Skilled yeah. trade up channel. I know you came like really prepared for this show. So. Yeah, I didn't know until a few minutes ago. This is my favorite way to be anyway. Yeah, I, me too. <laughs> skill Trade Up is just a game show that I do where we give away tools. Mm -hmm. So HVAC Techs will play. And tonight we're doing the first time we do multiple people at the same time. So it's going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to pit them against each other. I don't know if it's going to be fun for them, but it's it's fun for me to see the social experiment play out. Oh, yeah. And then on Friday nights, as you may know, because you were on last week, the ill-fated show, they got interrupted in the middle, but... Uh, on HVAC training videos, we have interviews every Friday night at eight. So that's pretty. That's pretty much it. Cool. So I asked you. It was kind of a last minute, as you kind of led to there. Uh, I was thinking. I was it, earlier today. I was like, man, I, I need to talk to Zach because, um, as far as keeping it real, you've you're kind of like my go-to guy for keeping keeping things real. Like you don't sugarcoat things, um, or at least you don't for me anyways. Uh, I don't in general, no. <laughs> which I appreciate that. And so like I want to talk about as, uh, as us being business owners and starting businesses, like a lot of people see the good stuff. Like, oh, yeah, you have 6,000 followers. Oh, yeah, you got 20,000 followers. Like you, you have great social media content. You have great YouTube, this and that. You're growing, you're scaling, you know, you're doing – we only tend to show like really our good stuff and uh, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I want to talk about some things where we struggle too. And I, I feel like you, you would be honest with me about that. Absolutely. Cool. I will. Cool. So today uh, we only have, you know, a couple minutes to talk, but I, w I want to ask uh, basically what, what have you found is your strongest, like what's, what's the, the most, uh, difficult thing for you to do when it comes to business and in HVAC industry? Well, I think my difficulty probably is shared by many, especially on the technical side who go into business for themselves, is coming to grips with being a business person instead of just a technical person. Because mm -hmm. I was under the belief, and we talked about this too, I think a few people have talked about this, where yeah. if you are a good technical person in HVAC, you believe that the HVAC gods will rain down business <laughs> on you as appreciation for your prowess and success, yeah. when, which the case is that doesn't, that doesn't happen. Right. You have to make a concerted effort to learn business and business strategy. And that was my biggest weakness for, and not just for at the beginning, but for years trying to come to grips with this. And I, you know what, I probably never came to grips with it compared to someone like you, or I talked to Steven Rarden a couple of weeks ago. So when you made an oh, effort, no. you became the warrior that you are now. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like we talked about, which people can't see because I had to erase it because of the uh, the strange ending to our <laughs> live stream. You went ahead and you did something which I would have thought was a weird cult, <laughs> a strange salesman thing, which would have given me pause because I put some sort of judgment on it in advance. But it was the right thing to do for you because you told me that you said it was the right yeah. thing to do, it made you wiser in business, and that's just something I never did, and it hurt me the whole time I was in business. You know. I, I feel like that um, we were growing like you've ever since you and I have known each other because uh, you started um, you started your podcast 
a little while before mine, right? Like, mm-hmm. how, how long would when, how long have you been doing the HVAC Shop Talk podcast? I think because it started out working Joe's podcast. Oh, that's right. That's right. To Shop Talk whenever we started our blue collar thing. Yeah. And I think because it was just a few months in because I was February 2017 and you okay. were like later on that same year. Yeah, like October or something, September, October of 2017. Um, but I feel like um, before, like, around that time i mean I, I was growing i mean our business was growing we were growing between 90 and 120 percent year over year um and whenever i started another business or b- purchased icebound and then re- have rebranded since with service emperor you know the i've kind of prided myself or or you know patted myself on the back of not sticking in with the service tech side of things but then I also like sometimes i feel like i I jump out of it too much though. Like, I, like, like, um, uh, I should be doing more technical stuff than what I do. Uh, does that make sense? It does. I think uh, I went through the same thing all the time, even nowadays with doing yeah. podcasts, more podcasts and actual field work. Yeah. I feel like you're giving up all the street cred you ever had <laughs> right. to go on to the next step. And the funny thing is, I think you have to do that to go to the next step. It's not something you can hold on to halfway unless you're going to do the next step halfway. Yeah. And it's just, it's one of those things where you might lose the respect of certain people out there that you're not getting your hands dirty every day, but it's just what you have to do to go to the next step. That took yeah. about nine years to come to. to me. Yeah. I mean, the thing about it is, is so like I, whenever, I, when I first became a service manager, I was told like, Hey, you can't stay in the field. You can't get back in the field. You can't do this. You can't do that. And I was like, all right, cool. I don't want to be in the field. But then, you know, the ego part of it's like, Hey, I I need to, I I need to be able to fix this for my guys. And and so then it's like, Hey, nobody else can fix it, but I can fix it. So pat myself on the back, blow my head up, you know, I'm the fixer of this. And then, so that's more of an ego thing. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I I mean, I, I definitely, I am right there with you though. Like I can't get to the next step if I keep staying in the field. Um, and, but it almost becomes a crutch though, too, because like if somebody quits and instead of searching really hard for another employee, like it's really easy for me to jump back in the, in the van. And you probably saw that this past summer where like I had a lot more content because there were times whenever I was three days out of the week, four days out of the week, I was in the van running service calls too, because we had more work than we could handle. I was wondering what was happening. It was either you had more work than you could handle or Tersh's company has fallen apart yeah completely (laughs) by himself like the rest of us yes and and that's how it felt sometimes too though it was like oh man what am i doing here (laughs) but i think the most successful people that you probably study from or the books that any of us would read about this subject those people are not half technicians half owners they're all the way owners and they're not going back because i think they realize and i'm kind of speaking at a turn here because i'm not an expert in this area but i think they must realize you can't go back and go to the level of success they want to go to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely believe that. I think that this year I gave myself the excuse of, of COVID and everything else that it's just a weird year. But I think in all honesty, like I never should have gotten back in the van at all. I should have totally just found people to work. Yeah. And that is something I struggle with. I never did grow like you've done or like a lot of people that I felt like we talked to Greg Fox. Yeah was one that has really been to me he's been like an idyllic business owner over the mm-hmm. last five years it's just because we followed him from before he even owned a business to now mm-hmm. to have a complete picture of his life i've never been able to replicate that or come to terms with the fact that i can't be the guy in the field and it's almost like you get a clear picture of who you're going to be in life if you can't come to terms with that you need not be an owner <laughs> yeah. it's not going to work for you or you're not going to be successful like someone like yourself or like greg who can mm-hmm compartmentalize and say that well that's no longer what i have to do but i can do it if i need to Mm. if something happens or we get 12 calls at one time or something which is kind of it's kind of nice and every now and then you get that satisfaction of going out there said and enjoy your new run capacitor (laughs) ma'am and thank goodness that's what it was thank you yeah (laughs) exactly i'm glad that's all it was because that's all i brought with me in my f-150 you know that's what (laughs) yeah you know that's what happens you know the owner goes out there it's like Run capacitor, low refrigerant. Let's do this. You know, <laughs> get out there. I don't have any refrigerant, so hopefully it's just a capacitor and only have the one turbo. Exactly. <laughs> if you have a, uh, if your blower motor capacitor is bad, you're getting a turbo 200. 
<laughs> yeah, you're getting 90 microfarads of help for your blower, and they'll see you tomorrow with the blower. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with another guy, a service tech's gonna be out here tomorrow with the blower. <laughs> yeah, a real service tech will be back tomorrow. That's right, because you have khakis on and a tie. It is. Yeah. Well, the weird thing is, is like they'll listen to me, and I'm like, you really need to be listening to this guy because he he knows what he's doing. Like, like you want to talk business? Well, I'll talk business with you, but like, don't take my advice about air conditioning. <laughs> I don't know. You're still a good tech. I mean, I, I know some of your pedigree, Tersh, because it goes back to our buddy Brent's days back in uh, when he was in Savannah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. He had to vouch for the fact that one day back in time, you were a technician. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> very, very true. I need to talk to Brent, too, because he's he's still in the field a pretty good bit, isn't he? Yeah, a pretty decent amount, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um. It, it's, uh. It, oh, yeah. You have the selfie of me with Brent, don't you? Absolutely. I wish I had it loaded up. I was not prepared for that. But if you do join us on Sunday night, I will bring it out just for the fun of it. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I, um, it, Brent's mom still lives here in town. Brent lived, moved up to Atlanta with his dad. Uh, and so Brent called me and said, Hey, my mom's uh, dehumidifier quit working or something. Just so happened, like it was 4th of July weekend. I think I'm pretty sure it was 4th of July weekend. And I had given all the guys the, time, the day off um, and I was on call. And I went over there and I'm like, dehumidifier. When's the last time I worked on a dehumidifier? I don't know. So I, I go over there, I'm looking at it and I'm like, wait a minute. And, and, uh, Brent's mom, like that's Brent's, uh, high school graduation picture. I'm like, Oh, selfie time. <laughs> so me and selfie, uh, with Brent senior Brent. So. That was great. <laughs> that was fantastic. I, I immediately, cause I'm in a text with Brent and a couple other people. I immediately took that picture directly over to that text said, Hey guys, who's this guy? And Brent's like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I don't even think I sent it to Brent yet. <laughs> In a way you did. <laughs> okay. Like, I think I, I took it and I'm like, I'm going to send this to Brent. And I forgot. And I was like, I sent it to Zach. So might as well. I mean, basically I sent it to Brent. You did. It a, it's like taking a flight. There's a layover on Zach, but it went right to Brent. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't resist that. Cause seeing Brent, you know, anybody back in when they're 18, 17 years old, they're going to look strange. Baby. Yeah. yeah. You look like a baby. You look out of place. You always have some kind of different hair. You know, Brent had, I, was, I said, uh, I think I said, which BG is this, Brent? Because <laughs> <laughs> he has, you know, shaggy. I really wish that picture was queued up, but I don't have it. it he's got to say, man, when, when I was a senior, man, I had, my hair was parted in the middle and it came down like this far. Like I was a straight surfer dude, like all the way through really? high school. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me see you go over the opposite look now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a choice. So I used to chew on my hair. My hair was so long in high school. It would come down and I would chew on it. I, I don't think mine was that long. Mine was really long. It was like down to the bottom of my ears for sure. It's a phase. We all it, go through it. It is. And I'm not looking forward for my kids to go through it. I'm going to shave their heads. Yeah. Good luck with that. I don't know. How, how old are your kids now? What's um, old? 12, 11, 12. Are my oh, two oldest boys? Younger. Okay, my, my son's about to be 17, and he went through the phase where his hair was down. And now he's doing stocking for soldiers, so we've, we've passed that phase, thank goodness. So, and of hey, course, the ROTC people will not let him fly with that hair any longer. No, absolutely not. You know, whenever I was in JROTC, um, we were like honor guard. Like, we were just ate up with it because, um, like, most of us knew that we were going to Air Force after high school anyways. Uh, and then the one guy that sh – he literally shaved his head like mine. He got points off at one of our events because of hair on his ear. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was it's ridiculous. It's, oh, yeah, my son, he flips out when he has, like, one little thing out of place on his uniform. He's like, oh, no. No, because he's got like rulers out and stuff, and he mm -hmm. is super anal about it. I mean, I'd say anal like a negative term, but he really cares yeah. about it. Just say like say it like that. He takes pride in this work. Absolutely, he's going to go into the military. Absolutely, have a career there. So. What's uh What's the link for that? I want to put that in the um in the Facebook Live there. Oh, let's see. I can I share a link on here? I don't know. Let me see. I'm not familiar with Zoom, but I can send it to you. Maybe I can Facebook it to you while we're talking. Yeah, that's um, that's something that I feel like anybody that's listening to this or watching this, they need to be uh, donating to that. How when's it? When's the deadline? The deadline is the end of this month, so the end of November. End of November, twenty twenty. I can do those too. Look, I'm a multitask. So I can. Man, I can talk. look at you! You're like a tech genius. There's screens everywhere, Tersh. I am. I can imagine. They're everywhere. Well, there's three of them. <laughs> Two computers that work together to stream one stream. 
See, look at there. Yep. Well, you have to have it. You know, with the, the amount of, I'll say it, crap that we try to do on one of our streams with all the different things that go on with all the different thumbnails and stuff and music that plays, it requires a computer for the hangout like we're on and a computer for the stream to make it work. Yeah, I mean, but the thing about it is, is like, uh, it, it's a true product to, uh, production value whenever you watch one of yours. So, hats oh, yeah. off, hats off to you for that because that's a. Uh, I started to mess with it and I was like, "Nah, I'm not diving in this rabbit hole." <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's intricate. Sometimes I'll forget something, I'll kick myself. But there's literally there's there's the mixing board, which is very similar to your Rode mixing board, except it's Zoom, the Zoom mm -hmm. version. Uh, oh live. yeah. And there's a stream deck with a bunch of buttons on it that I had to hit some manually that are in the stream yard hangout so that people can see it because they can't see it otherwise. So it's, uh, and I just sent you that information through messenger. So hopefully you can, I got it. it. I already pinned it. It's, oh, in the group. Right. it's in the chat. So he's doing a great job. He's going to be on the news today. Uh, um, I know you guys aren't going to see it because you're different parts of the country. It's local news. It's like what channel is channel three. I'll, I'll, I'll tune in to channel three. It is, it is channel six It's W E C T TV. Channel six. I'll, I'll sit there and patiently wait for channel six. <laughs> I don't know what your channel six will be. I don't know. It's probably Telemundo or something. I don't even have a channel six. I don't know. <laughs> but I think you can probably see it online or we'll post it to that page. If you want to follow the page like he posted in there, you'll probably see it there. So All right, cool. On that, probably. They're trying to search your TV for local channels for places you don't live. <laughs> Where does he live at again? North Carolina somewhere? Let me search every town in North Carolina, channel six. Well, I'll tell you, we're, we're in Willard. Go ahead and search that. Find that. I don't think I've ever heard of that. Well, that's 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 the way it's going to be, probably. <laughs> Population 104 or something, depending on, you know. You know, that's about, like, the population of Savannah. No. no I mean, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I was looking up, because we were looking at, like, demographics and, and how large of an area it is and how much it'll handle, like, competition-wise. And... Um, and people were like, you know, Savannah's large. You know, you get, what you have a million people there, and I, I googled it, and it's like, one hundred and forty-four thousand. It's like, wow, that's a small, that's a big small town. That is a big small. That's like Wilmington. It's one hundred and twenty-six thousand metro, and then you have a quarter million in the the whole area. Yeah. So it's pretty similar to Savannah, I think. Cool, bud. Well, um, I just wanted to get on here and, and talk to you a minute about that. I know that um, we all have our struggles with stuff and I feel like you, you hit the nail on the head and just kind of getting out of our own way. Uh, and mm -hmm. I, I think that's, I think that's one of the biggest struggles that a lot of us as business owners have. That was my main one. There's, there's more. We can do like a 10 part series. If you want to whenever you're hurting for something to do, you can let me know. There, there, truthfully, there is plenty more, but that is probably the main one as far as being a businessman. Uh, and there's other stuff that just comes along life-wise that gets in the way. So it's a little different story. Yeah. And, and we're going to talk about that on Sunday too. Um, a little absolutely. bit. Absolutely. In we're, fact, I will get you a link for that too. Cause I haven't created that event, but as soon as I do, I'll send it to you. If you okay. want to share people. I'll share it, share it with everybody that's listening and watching. I and, uh, I'm excited because uh, I get to talk with Brent and I haven't seen him in like a year. So I gotta, I gotta sense. still invite Brent. You're the first person I invited. I gotta still talk to Brent. I tell him <laughs> now he's gotta come. He's gotta come now because we're gonna show the picture. And if he doesn't, it's just gonna piss me off. He doesn't have a choice now. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 we'll do is just have a a, a fourth box sitting there with his picture in it. <laughs> yeah, with that particular picture, I'll blow it up and uh, put his face in there. He better come. You know, I'm tempted just to call him from here. And we'll make it we'll make that. We can Why don't you go ahead and call him right now while you're while we're on here? Let me see what I can do with this. If I have my little cord, I could plug it into this mixer and do it. I, I can do it with the. Mm -hmm. I'll get Brent on here. We'll we'll put him in the device. Put him in the hot seat. Mm -hmm. Brent Ridley. There you go. Oh, McCord. I knew where McCord was to be more professional. Hey, buddy, what's up? Hey, Brent, you're you're on live with Tersh and me, all right? All right. Tersh, so Tersh can't, Tersh can't talk to you, per se, because he's not plugged in. He says what's up. But uh, we want to invite you to an event Sunday night at 8 p.m., a live stream. Can you do that? Sure, absolutely. Count me in. 
That's not just because we're putting you on the spot and you're going to text me later and say you have coronavirus or something. No, I'm not, I'm not real. Okay, good. Okay. All right. See, I like that. All right, Brent, well, I'm going to let you go, man. We're going to get back to this live stream, okay? All right. Sounds good, bro. We'll see you I'll send you a message in a little bit to explain. All right. Bye. All right, bye. That's fine. That's well, Brent. He's in. <laughs> he's in. <laughs> Why well, wait? You know, another thing in business, if you need something done, don't put it off. Just do exactly, it Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Just do it. Speed. Speed of everything. Speed of uh, implementing. That's, I that's learned key. that later, too, there, Tersh. I mean, that's a whole other story. Don't put anything off. Just, you know, whether it be an awkward conversation with the person who just lost their ceiling because of your drain pan or whatever, just just take care of it. You know what I'm saying? It happens. It happens. I, I, had, a, I had one raining ceiling issue. Oh, that's horrible. It, that's it horrible. Was. It was horrible. stupid. Aluminum coils with their slime. Oh, uh, yeah. Long it's story. A different day, I guess. Different doing. Cool, bud. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem. Glad to be part of it. Thank you, Dersh. Yeah, bud. I'll see you later. Bye, Tersh. Bye. Bye.